I'm Ryan Lightfoot Brown of Chelsea Financial Services. We're joined today by Ken Watton, the manager of the Gresham House UK Microcap Fund. Thanks for joining us, Ken. Good to be here. Now, your fund was launched uh, 10 years ago, back in May 2009. What have been the highs and the lows in terms of stocks in that 10 year period? Um, I think it's been a pretty eventful 10 years, to be honest, with, with uh, the fund being launched in the, the sort of immediate aftermath of the financial crisis. There were still some concerns about UK and US banks. Uh, we then went into a period of austerity. We've had the European banking crisis and sovereign debt crisis, um, and then more recently Trump and Brexit. So it's been a pretty uh, interesting time to be to be investing. Um, and whilst that 10 years has been a bull market for, for UK smaller companies, uh, it hasn't really felt like that. Um, so you know, we've been very selective about the stocks that we've, we've, uh, we've, we've picked for the fund. It's been a concentrated portfolio uh, throughout its life. Um, but there's been lots of highlights, so I'm, I'm happy to talk about some specific stocks uh, if, if you've got some. Yeah, if there's any sort of stock that you'd like to highlight as one of your, your best ideas. I mean, a real highlight, which kind of just uh, reflects the, the, the length of duration of the fund, is a company called Next15 Communications, um, which is a digital marketing agency. Um, and it's a company that we invested in right at the beginning of the fund's life in, in, in 2009. Um, and over the period uh, that, that the fund um, has been around, that stock has appreciated almost tenfold in value. So it's been a really successful investment for us. Um, and what the company does is focus marketing services, but on uh, technology clients. So it's, its client roster is a who's who of big tech companies like Facebook, Oracle, Google, Microsoft, etc. Um, and just to give you a, a sense of, of, of how long the, the fund's been around, Facebook was a very new customer of, uh, of Next15 when we first invested. At the time, Facebook's revenues were about $200 million. Um, and I checked the other day, and their forecast revenues for 2019 are $70 billion. So that, uh, perhaps Facebook would be a better investment, but Next15 has done us, done us very well. Well, um, now, as of your sort of fund name suggests, you write, you invest in the UK's sort of smallest companies, but prepare to hold them as they, as they grow. Where do you define sort of a, a micro cap versus small cap or versus, versus mid cap? Our definition of, of micro cap is companies that have a market cap um, of under 250 million. Mm -hmm. um, and so the fund invests in companies that are, that are that sort of size at the point of investment, but we don't necessarily just sell them arbitrarily because they get bigger, because um, that would be a waste of the resource mm -hmm. and, and, and the research that we've done. Um, we, we try to keep the, the fund's centre of gravity um, in micro cap, so um, we have a, a, a parameter that the weighted average market capitalisation of the portfolio needs to be below 250 million, but any individual stock can potentially grow beyond that. Um, now, other than Next15 Communications, which we've already talked about, um, what has been your best and most successful holding in the portfolio? There's been lots of successful holdings, um, but to, it's, I, I would pick sort of one in particular that um, is a really good example of, of our process in action and, and, and probably surpassed our expectations in terms of the returns we've made, and that's um, a company called Alpha FX. Mm -hmm. so Alpha FX is a um, consultancy business and a broker um, for corporate foreign exchange services that so provides mid-sized corporates that have multi-currency activities with hedging contracts uh, to help them to mitigate their, their currency risk. Um, it's taking market share from uh, your, your typical banks um, which, which uh, basically give a, a, a less uh, sort of bespoke service to the companies and, and also a more expensive one. Um, we first became aware of this company more than a year before it did its IPO onto AIM in 2014. Um, and uh, actually my, my colleagues uh, from, from Living Bridge, my previous company, um, had actually looked at this company as a potential private investment uh, several years before that. So I was involved with the company to, to help them think through the IPO process, um, including which brokers to select, um, and, and also as a fund manager just to hear their equity story prior to them going around and, and, and telling a wide, the wider fund management community. Um, so we were one of the cornerstone investors in the IPO mm -hmm. um, and the stock was phenomenally successful very quickly. Um, we actually made 2.6 times our original cost in, in, in you know, a matter of months after the IPO. So it was, although it was a relatively short duration hold, um, it was actually a very, very successful stock. Now you mentioned you invest in the AIM market. Can you just explain to us um, what the, the AIM market is um, and some of the misconceptions about it being a bit riskier? The AIM index is the junior market of the London Stock Exchange, and by junior that means typically 
uh, smaller companies, maybe less well developed uh, or companies with a shorter track record. Uh, and it's a market where the regulatory um, oversight and some of the costs of, of being listed um, are, are less onerous for, for a small company than, than the main market. Um, it's a, a market which is full of really interesting UK growth companies, uh, which is the area where we focus. Um, and uh, whilst historically AIM has sort of had a reputation for having uh, you know, some poorer governance and, and, uh, and, and companies which were perhaps slightly more speculative. Um, over the last 10 years that we've run this fund, I think the market has really grown up. The number of companies listed on AIM has reduced, but the quality has significantly improved. You only invest in um, quite a few sectors, where, um, where you have the most expertise. These are sort of technology, telecommunications, consumer products, business services, healthcare and education. How has this specialism come about? and has that changed at all over the past decade? The sectors that we focus on haven't really changed much over, over the last decade. Um, the reason why we focus on those, on those particular sectors are largely because those are areas where uh, big external factors are not the main determinant of whether an investment is successful or not. So we avoid sectors like mining and oil and gas, real estate, where some big external factors like the oil price or whatever can, can be the making or breaking of your stock. We're, we're trying to find companies where the management team and the successful execution of their strategy is the key um, kind of area of, of, of whether or not a stock is successful for us or not. Um, those sectors that you mentioned, um, that makes up roughly 80% of the UK economy. So you know, this is a lot of companies still, um, but they're, they're ones which should typically um, asset light and, and service sector orientated um, and they're businesses where we think the management team could make a real difference. Well, Ken, that's been really interesting. Thank you very much for, for joining us. Okay, thank you. Uh, and for more information on the Gresham House UK Microcap Fund, please visit chelseafs.co.uk.